Have you ever had something happen to you that you thought wasn't all that great, but then later on you found out it probably was the better thing? Well, I think I just did. Welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam, and I've been living with multiple sclerosis for nearly 38 years. And some time ago, I made a video that I'll link below about my insurance saga, because when I moved from New York State, where I had qualified for not only SSDI, but also what I thought was a really great Medicare Advantage plan. Then I moved back to Washington State where I kept my SSDI because that goes with you wherever you go, but I lost my Medicare Advantage plan because I was now living in a county in Washington State where that was not offered to people until they were 65, regardless of whether they were on Medicare for a disability. And I was just kind of bemoaning that because I thought my Medicare Advantage plan was just really awesome. And then I saw a video the other day that set me straight. I'm going to play little parts of that video for you, but I do advise you to watch the whole thing because it is really eye-opening, at least for me it was. And I don't know, maybe you already knew this, but... I don't think so, because I've never heard anyone talk about it before. But it's helpful to understand, especially now that open enrollment period is pretty much coming upon us. It's helpful to understand the difference between Medicare, what they call original Medicare, and any kind of Medicare supplemental. I'll let the folks in the video explain it. This particular video was created and posted by a man named Christopher Westfall, who runs an insurance company that helps seniors figure out which plans are best for them. I called him a couple of years ago when I first moved to Washington and found out that I was not qualified for any kind of supplemental Medicare at all, any kind of insurance other than original Medicare. And he suggested that I just keep checking back because things might change. But you know, now that time has gone by, I'm kind of thinking maybe it's just as well that I moved to a county that did not offer Medicare Advantage plans. Let's take a look at some of this video. I'm Chris Westfall, and I believe that seniors should not be ripped off or misled or scammed when it comes to their health care. And in the last few years, when all the voices in the whole wide world are pushing only one thing, and that's Medicare Advantage, today I bring to you yet more evidence, not just from me and not my bias toward coverage versus insurance, which is what Medicare is. Medicare itself is coverage. Medicare Advantage is insurance, the old kind of insurance you're used to, where they try to spend as least the least amount of money on you as possible. You have to fight and claw and get things approved get prior authorizations, get referrals, and get permission to have things done. That's insurance. Original Medicare is what you earned, and you give that up when you go with Medicare Advantage. And I know no one else is telling you this. I know how rare it is to have someone tell you this. So I'm going to share with you some other voices out there that you may not have been privy to before. One is from Wendell Potter. Wendell Potter was an insider. He actually worked for the Medicare Advantage companies and got so disgusted with what he saw that he actually wrote a book about it. And here's Wendell in his own words. Joining us now is Wendell Potter, former executive for the health insurance companies Cigna and Humana. If you can start off by explaining uh, how Medicare Advantage works, many people might say, oh, they thought that was a government program for people 65 and older. It is, it's, it's important to note that it is neither Medicare nor is it an advantage. Uh, it is, I think, will be recognized in years to come as probably the biggest heist, the biggest fraud, the biggest uh, transfer of wealth from taxpayers, middle income, low income uh, Americans, from them to corporate executives and shareholders. It is a plan that has been in the works uh, or has been around for about 20 years. Uh, now, 20 years later, is to the point that almost half, and in some uh, cities and districts, 
uh, well more than half already are enrolled in this program. It is a private program. It is operated by private insurance companies. Uh, they're lured into these plans with deceptive advertising. Uh, the plans feature things that are common in private plans but not in traditional Medicare, such as prior authorization. Doctors have to get permission in many cases from uh, the insurance company before they can treat their patients. Uh, inadequate networks, particularly as people get older and sicker, and very, very high out-of-pocket cost if, uh, if people uh, knowingly or inadvertently go out of network. So it is a, 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 a program that absolutely should be called disadvantage. Wendell was asked, why is it that no one is, they're like the, the fox guarding the hen house, why is no one doing anything about this? And the answer may surprise you. Uh, why isn't the government exercising more regulation or control over these, uh, this process, especially the one that, as the Times reported, are piling on badly documented illnesses? Well, it's not because Congress has never seen this kind of information before. Uh, many uh, governmental organizations and uh, 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 like the uh, OIG, uh, the GAO, MedPAC. How many times have we brought this up? We brought this up for the last three years and still no one in the media is talking about it. The Office of Inspector General report. You can see that if you've not yet seen it over on allaboutmedicareadvantage.com, allaboutmedicareadvantage.com. On Medicare issues and payment issues and uh, the Department of Justice, which has intervened in a number of these whistleblower lawsuits against these companies. Uh, that's been uh, something that's been going on for a long time. And there also, by the way, have been other important journalists who've taken this on and done this investigation. Uh, so they've known this, but they've turned a blind eye in many cases because of the massive amounts of our money that these big corporations are spending to lobby Congress, uh, to uh, uh, throw money into their campaigns for re-election, uh, and, uh, and to propaganda campaigns and very, very misleading uh, uh, advertising, as, as you just mentioned. Open enrollment will begin in just a few weeks uh, for uh, uh, Medicare-eligible beneficiaries, and you will see uh, just a, a barrage, a constant barrage of ads uh, from these companies uh, that uh, are, uh, it, they do not tell the truth. They leave out important details, like I, some that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's how they pull it off. And Congress actually has given CMS more authority uh, to crack down on this fraudulent program, but they've just turned a blind eye. That is a classic example of uh, regulatory capture. Uh, there's this revolving door uh, between private industry and government, uh, and uh, uh, massive, again, massive amounts of money that uh, fund all this lobbying uh, and, uh, and propaganda. Wendell Potter, you had your own mother disenrolled from the Medicare Advantage plan over a decade ago. Why did that happen and yeah. uh, what was the impact on her health as a result? This is something that every senior should know. Uh, they, these companies go after people when they're uh, younger and healthier uh, with kind of a siren call that uh, you can enroll in these plans for no money. Uh, you can actually get money put back into your Social Security account, as we hear from uh, people like Joe Namath and William Shatner and Jimmy J.J. Walker. Uh, but the truth is, as you get older and sicker, then you become aware of just the disadvantages of this program. Uh, my mother broke her hip. She needed to have uh, rehab and skilled nursing uh, services for a while. Uh, when we looked at what was available to her in the provider network, it was incredibly inadequate. Uh, so I worked with my mom to uh, get her out of a Medicare Advantage uh, plan. It was one that was operated by United Healthcare, uh, and they mark it in conjunction with AARP, uh, which is an outrage in my view. Uh, but uh, uh, she, uh, but, but there's a problem there because when you do that and you're older, uh, and you wait, you know, years uh, after being becoming eligible for Medicare, uh, it's harder and more expensive to get a Medicare supplement policy to help cover your out-of-pockets. Uh, so we did that knowing that. We had to pay a lot of money, but at least she was able to get the care that she needed 
at a quality uh, facility where she got the rehab and skilled nursing care that she needed, uh, which she would not have gotten had she stayed in that Medicare Advantage program. I'm confident my mom lived uh, uh, additional years because of what we were able to do. Mm. Wendell Potter, um, finally, what should Congress do to prevent this kind of fraud? And we're moving into the midterm elections. What has to happen right now? Well, there are some important bills that have been introduced and some I trust will be introduced before too long. It should not even be called Medicare Advantage. Like I said earlier, it's not Medicare, nor is it an advantage. So I think there should be legislation that should bar these companies from even using the name Medicare. Uh, there are some good members of Congress. Uh, Congresswoman Jayapal has been the lead sponsor, as you may know, of Medi uh, a Medicare for All bill. Uh, she gets it. Others get it, too. Uh, but um, uh, this is going to be an important step along the way. There's going to be a big, uh, uh, frankly, uh, effort by industry to say we should have Medicare Advantage for all, which would be the greatest travesty I think that this country could ever experience. I show you a bill that's being proposed and gathering some co-sponsors right now, but this bill might get some traction and might help someone who's turning 65, brand new to Medicare, to understand that Medicare Advantage is not Medicare. Medicare Advantage is taking you off of the Medicare that you paid into your whole entire life. Medicare Advantage is not Medicare. Here's what we're talking about with the- Mark bill. Pocan is with us. You know, the problem with some of these Medicare Advantage programs, the fact that they're not Medicare, uh, often they're shortchanging people from getting the actual care they need and now I think a full majority of people in this country, um, or over half the people on Medicare, are on these Advantage plans that are really substandard. And uh, so we uh, had a lot of conversations and decided the best way to try to approach this would be to um, ban the use of Medicare in the names of these plans. The so word they, Medicare. They can't be, yeah, so they can't be Medicare Advantage. They can be whatever they want to be, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, whatever, whatever company has one, they can call it anything but Medicare, but only Medicare is Medicare. And we want to preserve Medicare because it is the best program uh, that's out there. We could, we should certainly try to improve it. You know, let's add dental and vision and hearing and, and other things to it, but to have this separate programming that doesn't provide the, the same quality of care uh, as Medicare is something that I think a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, a lot of people don't know because they're really, really misled by the fact that it's got Medicare in the name. Then the lobbyists on K Street in Washington tried to get it to be called Part C of Medicare. There's another part of Medicare called Part C. Part A is going in the hospital. Part B is outpatient things. Part D is a drug plan that's a standalone that goes with, with original Medicare. But let's call a whole new thing here Part C. But actually Part C pulls you away from A, B, and D, because you're not having those anymore. And it's completely a replacement for original Medicare. So Mark here, uh, the Congressman, also has a personal story, which is what drove him to be such a strong advocate for getting something done. Here's the Congressman's own personal story and why this impacts him so much. And tragically, it's not as good as Wendell's story, but it was with Medicare Advantage. Mom was one of those people. Um, she passed in February, and when she was in assisted living a couple of years back uh, ago down in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, they identified some care that she needed that someone actually came right into the building and could have provided for her. But because she was on one of these Advantage programs, she couldn't take advantage of that. Uh, you know, Only Medicare was going to take care of that. She would have had to leave the building to get some of that regular care and she was not especially mobile and wound up not getting the care she needed. So, you know, this is a story and probably one of the lesser stories of what some people have had if they're out of network in one of these plans, they can get billed really big expenses. Um, we wanna make sure that we're doing everything possible to preserve, protect and enhance Medicare. Medicare Advantage programs certainly don't do that. Seniors turned 65, 66, 67, having never known that they could have enjoyed the original coverage provided by the Medicare that they paid into their whole lives. They were told, when you get on Medicare, you join one of these plans. You join a Medicare Advantage plan. They never had the choice. The unfortunate reality is, if that was you, you signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan when you're 65, 
then to go back to original Medicare, which you can do, you can do it during AEP, that's this period of time from October 15th through December 7th. You also have another period of time that you can do that from January 1st to March 31st. They are calling that now the open enrollment period where you could leave Medicare Advantage and go back to original Medicare. But if you want to enjoy a Medicare plan, that's original Medicare that is, with a Medicare supplement that fills in that other 20%, it plugs the holes of original Medicare, making it a complete system. You have to qualify by answering health questions if you're outside of your initial election period. So you may not be able to do that ever again if you were swiped into a Medicare Advantage plan when you first got on Medicare and now it's years later and you're just now discovering what you got with that free plan that someone was kind enough to sign you up for for a commission of $700, $750 to get you onto that plan and then they're paid on you for the rest of your life on Medicare Advantage. You can see that information on a website called allaboutmedicareadvantage.com. I encourage you to go there, allaboutmedicareadvantage.com, and I'll continue to populate that site with news and things coming out about Medicare, and you'll have links to the live streams and all that kind of stuff. You can watch the, the past broadcast on allaboutmedicareadvantage.com. Well, I hope you found that as informative and interesting as I did. This is really more along the lines of a public service announcement rather than a typical video that I would post. But as I said, open enrollment period is almost here. Maybe some of you are closing in on being 65. Maybe you do need to make these decisions. It's just good to know what really is going on before you make a decision that perhaps later on you'll be sorry that you made. But I hope not. I hope that all goes well for you, and I really do want to hear from you. Have you had this kind of thing happen, or are you aware of these differences in coverage versus insurance? And are you happy with the coverage that you have now? Have you ever run into problems? I'd be really curious to know, and I'm sure everybody else would too. So I look forward to hearing from you, but in the meantime, you take really good care of yourself. I will see you again in my next video.